Hi. This is Lake. <laughs> now Lake wants to be on camera. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys, updating you on my decision to go forward with foster to adopt as opposed to private adoption. So that's what we're talking about today. When I started this process, I thought I was gonna do private adoption. That's when I started, oh, look who's coming to say hi. Carly is, wants to come on camera too. So, <laughs> nope, she's just moseying around. I thought I was gonna do private adoption and that's why I started my GoFundMe campaign for the $30,000. Well, shortly after starting that, I did some research and found out more information about foster to adopt. And I called a, a, an adoption agency. I literally just Googled Los Angeles foster agencies. And my intention was only to find out information. I wasn't trying to move forward. I was just gonna like try and find some, I'm getting a pimple, must be stress. Um, and so I get on the, I, I Google it. And then like, I find the first one that was in Los Angeles and no, I, I Googled California agencies and I found the first one in Los Angeles. And on that list, it was a company called Aviva Foster and Child Services. I think it's Aviva Foster and Child Services. I think that's the name of it. And, but I know it's called Aviva, A-V-I-V-A, A-V-I-V-A. And, okay, you can go now. So I get on the phone with them and I get transferred to this wonderful woman. Her name is Magali. And she starts telling me about this process and about fostering. And everything just seemed the way she presented it, the way I guess I understood everything, I always have a lot of questions. Like, I am the type of person who has ton of questions. But I got everything and we were about to hang up the phone and she hadn't told me her name yet. And I said, oh, by the way, what's your name? Or she might have told me and I didn't hear it or something. And she says, oh, it's Magali. And I stop and I'm like, wait a minute what? What is your name? She's like, it's Magali. I was like, how do you spell it? And she tells me M-A-G-A-L-Y. And I like flipped. I was, it was like one of those things that happen when you just know, like when everything just works. I said to her, that's my mom's name. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah. So I said, my mom, her first language is French. So they actually say Magali, not Magali, but it's the same. And she spells it with one more A. My mom spells it M-A-A-G-A-L-Y. So it was just like, I believe in things aligning and working as they should. And that was just one little affirmation of, man, this feels right. I finished that conversation and Magali says to me, well, if you want to meet, I can come to your house on Monday. I didn't expect that. Like, that was not the intention for this phone call. But she kind of led the way, and I was like, hey, why not? So she came over my house that following Monday. She meets me, sees the animals, sees my home, and things like that. And she, uh, you know, everything is going well. She does her little orientation, tells me what this process is like. And we start the process. So basically, basically, she leaves a bunch of documents for me. And the first things that I had to do were, I had to do like a name verification, I guess. Like she had to run my name in, I guess, some state system, state or maybe even federal. I don't even know. But they had to run my name and make, basically make sure that I am who I am. And I guess that there's nothing illegal going on. So she did that, and once she got that information, which was like maybe two days later, she had told me I can then move on to the next steps. The next steps were that I needed to go get my health screening, which I know I've updated you guys on some of this, so I'll kind of run through this quickly. 
my health screening. I had to do a water safety test because we have a pool here. Um, I had to do, I had to get the animals vaccinated and then I had to get uh, emergency contacts. And once I did all of that stuff, oh, and my CPR certification, I got that as well. So once I did all of that, I then gave her that information and then she said, okay, well, I got your name verification back. You can now go on to the next step. So now I'm on the third step. And the third step is the live scan, which basically if you don't know what a live scan is, that is something that is like, it basically it's your fingerprints. You take, you go to this store front place. It's usually like in like a, I don't know. I've seen them in like little strip mall things. Um, and you put your fingers down and they scan them electronically and then that gets sent off. So when you're doing the foster care, it gets sent off to the Department of Justice, it gets sent to the FBI, and it gets sent to child services. Uh, and basically what that's doing is running your prints and they are double checking to make sure you don't have felonies, you don't have any child sexual abuse in your past or anything like that. So obviously I don't have any of those things, so I have nothing to worry. Um, I had to get one person to do it with me. I'm fairly certain, the only reason I can think that they wanted this was because I'm single. Uh, they required me to have like an emergency person. So uh, once I got the all this health screenings, the animals, my CPR, my water certificate, the application, finances, she came to my house, um, the live scan, my name check, now, the next thing is uh, the classes. So I am required to take five online adoption uh, education classes and seven in-person adoption, uh, adoption classes. Those classes, uh, Magali will take me through at their office. We start that next week. But what I did to make sure that I have the best like outcome and am the most forthcoming and keeping everyone updated is I realized that the foster to adopt is actually going a lot more smoothly and seamlessly than private adoption was. And there are other things that have happened that just felt so right through the on the foster side. And that's why I took the GoFundMe campaign and lowered it from 30,000 all the way down to 4,000. I want you guys to think about when, when a, a woman is pregnant and she's having a baby, typically they know the sex of the baby, they know they're gonna have a newborn, uh, they know a lot of different things about the baby. Well, when you're fostering, you don't know until you get a phone call that day and they say, come pick up this child. You don't know anything other than what you tell them what you're looking for. So I have told the foster agency, I'm interested in fostering a uh, newborn baby up to the day of birth, all the way up to age one. And now we all know that babies grow very quickly. So I could go out and buy things for newborns a newborn and then get a three-year-old child that they're asking me to foster and I can't foster and I cannot use any of the stuff I purchased. So it's hard to start purchasing things now. And and I've I've done some research and found that a lot of foster parents run into these situations. So a friend of mine from Facebook had said, well, why don't you change your GoFundMe to a lesser amount and utilize it for when when you find out what baby you are going to be fostering. And I thought that's a wonderful idea. So GoFundMe requires you to constantly have the money uh, leaving their accounts and depositing the yours. So I actually opened up a second account at my bank that the money funnels to, and it just sits in that account. And it's just sitting there until uh, this process is through, they place me with a baby, and when I know then I can, there are certain things like a car seat, a crib, those things you know that I that I can buy. And I'm, I'm required to purchase as well before they'll even give me my license. Um, because we also have to do a home study and that's another video I'll do 
a whole whole video on, but they come and they check everything. They ask me about my life. There are certain things about my apartment, locks for um, certain, like for cabinets and things that I have to get. So all of these things will help with that. So when people are donating, you're donating to the process of getting set up for the for the um, for the home study and for the foster process, but also for like newborn baby stuff. And my friend said to me, this is like a virtual baby shower. When you have a baby, your friends throw you a baby shower, your family throws you a baby shower and everyone buys you wipes or diapers or, you know, a, a high chair or bottles and things like that. But because you don't know if you're gonna be placed with a newborn or three month, six, seven, eight month old child, you can't really do that. So the next best thing is to do the GoFundMe. I did it at a far lesser amount of money and once I know, then I can go out and make those purchases. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Everything else, uh, the private adoption is not something I'm looking into anymore. I am gonna go forward with the foster and, and fostering's always been on my heart. I've always had that in the back of my mind that I, do, that I did want to foster a child someday. So I feel really good about this. I know that was a lot of rambling in this video, but I wanted to update you guys. So. It's important that people know there have been people that put made $5 donations. Guess what? $5 helps, you know, because guess that goes towards diapers, that goes towards wipe, that goes wipes, goes towards formula. It goes towards bottles, it goes towards onesies. It goes towards it all adds up at the end of the day. So, if you can donate $5, donate $5. If you can donate $10, I've gotten 10, I've gotten $25 donations. I've gotten a $500 donation. If you can do anything, just do anything because all of that helps. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for following this journey. Uh, once I get more information, I'll update more. And as soon as I start purchasing stuff, I will show you guys what I'm purchasing. Oh my God, and try and learn how to use this baby stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Can you imagine me trying to learn this baby stuff? Okay, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I can do this. I can do this. Bye, guys.